Trey, what's an investor to do? Because if you don't look at the ISM numbers, you're looking backwards. The ISM numbers are thought to be that's the only way to look forward. So what do you do as an investor? I think you've got to be careful in terms of um, what expectations you set in underwriting deals and underwriting credit uh, going forward, um, because certainly I think a lot of the positivity has been priced certainly into the equity markets and in the credit markets as well as people search for yield on a global basis. We, we, uh, Steve referred to the business cycle, where we are on it, and most people think we're getting a little bit long in the tooth, and the question really is whether President Trump can extend it. How critical is that to investment decisions? Certainly you've seen the animal spirits pick up in the markets, and I think that's extended a lot of people's optimism. Um, it will be important to see the fundamentals actually start to flow through. Uh, we've obviously seen substantial earnings growth coming in the fourth quarter, uh, and I think the year-over-year -year comps are going to be easy in the first quarter, uh, but again, a lot of the changes we're expecting on the regulatory front and from a tax perspective are going to take longer to come to fruition. Trey, as you look at the situation, the story is an optimistic one. Let's talk about the price of the story and credit right now. It looks incredibly expensive. What is your view on that? Yeah, certainly the broader credit markets have seen a huge bid, uh, in particular floating rate as people have looked for an inflation hedge and some place to mitigate the potential risks of rising, rising interest rates. Um, I think there are certainly sectors that are underperforming and, and beleaguered, if you will, uh, relative to the rest of the market. And I think you have to be careful looking at those opportunities. But uh, you look at sectors where I think there are still opportunities like retail, uh, certainly a, an industry that's going through secular shifts, uh, but a sector where there are going to be winners and losers um, based on what the consumer is doing. Uh, the, obviously, where we are in the job cycle um, and, and in terms of full employment and wage growth, I think that there is a potential bid um, you know, for uh, consumers to, to improve. So, so, Trey, when we talk about the growth numbers that Steve was talking about, 2.3%, 2.5%, should we just get used to it, that this is the new normal instead of a 4% number, in the sense that you have to get productivity really growing again, and no one seems to have a plan for that? And you have to have investment to follow that. And, and I think that's the real concern. I think that there's a lot of optimism around uh, a, an improving demand environment, but not a lot of companies willing to put capital behind that to enhance capacity, to enhance productivity, and to see uh, further uptide to economic growth. Kevin Walsh, a name that I hear a whole lot more about these days, former Fed governor, and in many people's minds in line to maybe take over at the Federal Reserve, in an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal just last month, talked about the data dependence of the Federal Reserve guys and referred to them almost as day traders. Yes, data dependent, yes, but moving around and jumping around like mm -hmm. day traders. Do you think that's true? Look, I think at the end of the day, Janet Yellen is a labor economist, and she's watching the tightness of the labor markets. Um, I think that they are definitely worried about getting behind the curve. And so we think some of the data that's recently come out of CPI and some of the job owning we've seen is certainly uh, begging for a rate, uh, rate rise before the middle of the year, before June. So let's ask the big question, Steve, that, that Kevin Warsh suggests. Uh, Congress, people in Congress would like to help uh, the Federal Reserve get out of that jam by essentially having rules. Uh, so it's not data dependent, so they can't jump back and forth and things like that. What would that mean? If that went forward in Congress, what would that mean for the economy in the long term? I'm much more uh, of a fan of discretion rather than rules-based monetary policy because anytime you set a rule, the system finds a way to game the rule. So to me, it's much easier to just go by discretion. Where I think the Fed made a big mistake is they've tried to re resolve this all through interest rates and their portfolio. Instead of looking at their regulatory approach, instead of looking at the bully pulpit that they have. And Donald Trump has proven how well you know, the bully pulpit can be. And the Federal Reserve walked away from those two very important tools years ago. And I think it's time they bring those tools back to allow them to be more flexible in some of the other tools. They've boxed themselves in on what little they can actually do, and I think that's a big mistake. Okay, if that is your approach, do you take a solace, encouragement from the executive order from the White House, saying we're going to take a hard look at all these regulations now? They might get some assistance from the White House to get some of those regulations out. Well, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I don't think you have to change the regulations in terms of certain extent, all you have to do is change the interpretation of some of these regulations. I mean, we've put very, very, very onerous restrictions on a lot of these financial institutions. And if you look at the loan to deposit ratio in this country, it is actually abysmal, which is one of the reasons why this economy can't get going. Everyone's so paranoid about leverage, but you know what? Leverage is the grease that makes the wheels spin. And without that grease, the wheels eventually seize up. And that's been part of the problem in here. As far as that reference to day traders goes, a, a Bloomberg client just messaged me and said, nope, tick traders. So maybe, <laughs> so maybe it's a little bit more aggressive than that. Trey, as you look at things, this situation's with the loan market. The president of the White House truly believes that they need to take the regulation and strip it back because these businesses, these small businesses that want loans, can't get them. Is it a demand problem? 
or is it a supply problem? You know, I certainly think that the deregulation or the, the watering down of the regulation of the banks is going to improve the transmission mechanism through the banking system. And I think the small business optimism that it's you know, at a five standard deviation high certainly is prepared to, to seek new credit and to, to see business growth. And I think that's exciting for the economy. Uh, the real question is, um, will they, they actually make those investments and will we see that regulation how quickly? Okay, many thanks to Steve Rusciuto of Missoula and Trey Parker of Highland Capital Management.